spoke to Shivan. Good afternoon to all. I am Anirudh from Stackroot. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar on site reliability engineering. Please make a note of my number on the screen for any technical difficulties during the webinar. Along with me is Shivkami in support, Dr. Yogesh Kumar Bhatt, Executive Vice President and Business Head of Stackroot, and the presenters of the webinar. Nagendra Prasad and P.S. Ravindranath, kindly keep your microphones on mute. Please keep sharing your questions in the chat window. We will take up questions at the end of the presentation. Look forward to seeing active participation in the poll questions as they pop up. Now, I would want to welcome Dr. Yogesh Kumar Bhatt, the Executive Vice President and Business Head of Stackroot, a veteran in the field of education and research. He brings with him 22 years of experience in corporate training. He has many product launches to his credit in the area of information technology, data science, and management. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Bhatt. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, Anirudh. Uh, I'm Yogesh here. Um, First of all, uh, on behalf of Stackroot, uh, let me welcome all of you here who have chosen to spend this time with us. Uh, we really appreciate this. Um, I just want to spend a few minutes speaking about uh, who we are at Stackroot and also introducing the speakers for today. Um, so let's uh, uh, talk about Stackroot first. Uh, Stackroot is an NIIT venture. All of you know NIIT. NIIT is a pioneer in IT education. Uh, entered this field long before others did. Uh, around five years back in 2015, uh, it was decided that we need to reinvent IT education and training. And with that objective, and specifically with a focus on product engineering, uh, Stackroot was born as a product engineering startup incubated within an IIT. Uh, ever since then, we have come a long way. Uh, you can see some milestones. We have covered thousands of students across our uh, key program. Our first and the flagship program, uh, which is an industry defining program, is called Stackroot Immersive. It's an immersive model by which we create and develop full stack uh, product engineers uh, and full stack software engineers. We launched a uh, stack route remote later, which is for working professionals uh, who need to move into full stack uh, engineering. Uh, we have developed something called stack route full stack developer quotient, which is an assessment to judge where one stands in stack route. Uh, I'm, I'm getting some comment here, uh, not audible. So just wanted to check with some people. Am I audible? Uh, maybe Anirudh, uh, can you confirm? Yeah, I can see yes. Most people seem to be saying yes. Uh, so I think uh, those who are saying an issue in audi uh, audio, maybe you need to uh, 
do something in your machine, check your speaker, or maybe log off and log in again. Uh, most people seem to be saying yes. Yes, Sandeep, I can see you are saying. Uh, yeah, so those who, who are having issue, I think they're very minor number of people. Please do log off and log in again. So I'll just continue. Uh, so we have uh, over these uh, four, four and a half, five years, uh, we have worked with uh, uh, very good uh, names in the industry. Some of them are uh, showcased there, uh, which is from large IT service organizations such as uh, say IBM, Wipro, uh, to uh, product companies such as Boeing, um, et cetera. Now uh, let's move on to the next slide, please. So I just spend a little time on what all we do today. Uh, we cover uh, the entire stack, uh, right from fresh hires for fresh hires. Uh, as I mentioned, we have an immersive program uh, which which can uh, which graduates product engineers and software engineers. Uh, more recently, we have launched a remote program, essentially uh, responding to the current changes. Where immersive means, of course, you know, there's no social distancing. You just immerse in the program uh, it's obviously in a in a face-to-face -face environment with deep interactions with mentors which are face-to-face -face. Uh, we have created a remote version of the same uh, to create product engineers and software engineers just launched that in the market as of last week uh, we have uh, uh, in the developer stack we have programs such as three focus programs such as software craftsmanship uh, and you know uh, a tech tech developer or tech leader program. Uh, on the other hand, we have our remote program for existing uh, professionals, working professionals, which is to get experienced people into full stack development, and that's what we call a stack root remote program, which has been there for a couple of years now, uh, very successful, and it's working with very very large companies and reskilling their existing workforce. Uh, we have focused a lot more recently into the uh, mid and senior level roles, uh, roles such as architects, program managers, product managers, and of course in technology leaders, uh, created a whole stack of programs for them. Uh, let's move on, please. So now coming to SRE, which is topic of the day, SRE as a role has really picked up uh, in the recent past. Uh, essentially to respond to the challenge if you if you see uh, in a way what um, agile method did to the pure development side uh, that got extended in a way uh, using devops uh, to make it more holistic and sre is coming more from the you know kind of a, uh, amalgamation between the development world and the deployment uh, that role is very critical, which came in, which assures reliability. Uh, we have we started a host of programs in this role, uh, responding to many of our customers. And we'll have our speakers to speak a lot more about that, but I'll just throw some little light. Uh, developers, for example, we, we have a program which focuses on the IT support staff uh, and gets them onto SRE role. Uh, similarly, we can do a program for the developers to get onto SRE role. Essentially, what we cover in this program is how do you manage uh, your and host on the cloud environment? How do you implement and manage your CI CD pipeline? How do you deploy Docker containerization? How do you bring in automation by scripting, uh, be it for, say, your CI CD using in something like Ansible? or be it for uh, you know the infrastructure side using something like terraform so that's the kind of stuff which we do in the sre developer program uh, moving on to architects uh, there we we do how do you uh, get uh, reliability at the center that's the whole idea so how do you build solutions to enhance the availability performance the stability uh, and of course bring in uh, automation by designing for it uh how do you set reliability objectives so things like that so that's what is there for for sre architect program and of course we do a series for leaders uh, where uh, we will talk about what are the building blocks the blocks of sre uh, i think we'll talk a little about that today our speakers will be covering that 
how what is the reliability fear and how does an sre uh, as a role uh, helps you fulfill or address that fear uh, how do you measure and manage metrics how, how what are the emerging patterns today you know because the new role obviously looks there are changes happening uh, in that uh, quite fast so that's the kind of stuff we do for leaders uh, uh, please move on to the next slide uh, with those, uh, this uh, I take this opportunity. It's in my a great pleasure to welcome the experts today who will take you through this session. Uh, first, let me introduce Mr. Nagendra Prasad. Mr. Nagendra Prasad uh, is a, a very well-experienced professional who has worked in companies such as Infosys, Satyam, and IBM, and has been running his own uh, company for last few years. I've known him uh, for a very long time, maybe a decade or more, uh, and I always found my interactions with him to be of uh, great value to me, very uh, interesting perspectives and very well uh, informed global professional. Uh, it's great that he's there as a speaker today. He's also author of a book. He's on advisory board in a couple of places. Uh, he has participated in curriculum development for, across institutions some of them listed here uh, it is also my pleasure to uh, welcome mr ravindranath mr ravindranath again i have known him for a few years uh, he is a product engineering professional uh, and he has uh, varied experience in it industry be it in the cloud side be it in the production operations be it in data centers uh, he has led initiatives in continuous product delivery uh, into software product test engineering, DevOps, so very wide variety of experience. He also co-founded a company called WinCity Network, which was focusing on the IT remote management service company. He has also served as uh, president of PMI Bangalore chapter earlier. So uh, let me welcome both uh, Mr. Nagin Prasad and Mr. Ravindranath here. And with those words, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll find this session very enriching and let me hand it over to Nagendra Prasad. Over to you. Just confirming, um, is my screen visible? Anirudh? Not yet, sir. Not yet? Not yet, sir. Yes, sir. Just give me a second and thanks dr yogesh and uh, a warm welcome to each one of you um, who have taken your valuable time today to be with us uh, today we'll be talking about the recently uh, a subject which has become very popular in the recent times which is uh, site reliability engineering and uh, this is a very gentle introduction which essentially means that you know we are not really going into all the depths of it at the same time uh, you will be able to appreciate the why part of this why do we care about this new topic and what is it that it's going to promise is the major part at the same time you will definitely get some uh, insights into uh, what problem does this solve for uh the it community so uh, i generally use this kind of an equation as to say that you know what are the problems that are getting interconnected and what is the piece of the puzzle let me just start with the number one thing that as we all know that every enterprise is becoming digital so whether we like it or not we are already using a you know webex uh, the training platform which is the go-to training platform uh, so there are different kinds of platforms like we have used amazon which is a uh, e-commerce platform 
and we have definitely used aggregation platforms like Zomato or anyone else. Everything that we do in our lives is becoming a digital experience. Now, reliability is becoming an expectation of the user. It is not that uh, when I open an application, okay, it will take its own time to come up, or when I click something, something else will show up, or I get interrupted, or the response becomes slow. None of these things today are acceptable to us. The moment you say it's a digital experience, it has to be reliable. So that has become a norm uh, for the whole world. Now, the other interesting thing for businesses is that customer experience essentially means money. If we cannot provide good customer experience, nobody will come to that app or uh, you know the service. Just think about it, uh, a cab hailing service in which you say that, you know, I want to now book the cab and it just keeps buffering for two minutes and nothing happens. If it happens three times, you would never go to that uh, application one more time. And so is the situation with everything that we come across. So there is an extraordinarily important interconnection among the things that we are speaking about here. It is digital, it is people's expectations are very high and it also means money. So SRE or the site reliability engineering seems to be the lifeboat which seems to get into this puzzle to put all these things together and help us. So if we can get this picture in mind and then we are really looking at the um, building blocks of SRE and how these things will work. Now, uh, uh, in about uh, uh, you know 40 minutes or so in the time that we are going to spend between me and my colleague, we will try to do at least three things today. You will understand why SRE is a very strategic imperative, why organization needs this. This is an extraordinarily important investment. You will definitely understand some concepts, principles of SRE, and what role the people who are a part of the team will play. And we will also leave you with at least three actions which are possible today and you can do in your own organizations to bring this culture. So let me start with a very basic thing about reliability. Whether we are working, working from home or uh, doing whatever that we are doing, we are all feeling very safe because our jawans in the border they are safeguarding all of us every single moment. Think about the gun that uh, this person is using and he is terribly confident that when he pulls the trigger, a bullet will be fired and he is sure to kill the enemy who is uh, in intruding to our territory. That is the basics of reliability. Anything that we do must happen, must happen as predicted. That is the way that we know we need to really look at things. And not only these equipments and the satellites and all other gadgets that we have come across in the world, moving towards that kind of reliability, but we also are looking at IT systems, which are extremely complex, also being becoming reliable to that level. So that's the subject that we are going to be talking about. Now, we talked about digital transformations, and many times in many of my presentations, I have used this concept. This is a whole summary of the whole lot of articles that uh, McKinsey has published. Here, there are typically four goals for any digital transformation, however small or big the enterprise is all about. People use digital transformation to get extraordinary customer insights. By customer insight, I mean, who is the next customer who is likely to buy my product or service? It could be at an individual level. If you have a million people, tell me the 10 people who are likely to buy my product next. To that level, analytics, data science, machine learning algorithms can help. Process improvement. You can really measure the efficiency, turnaround times, and many other metrics of the process. And with the data, you can really improve the process and also automate them. So all of you must be definitely looking at RPA and many other things that are coming in this area, which helps to make the process extremely robust. Now, supply chain integration or a partner collaboration is another area where digital transformation is playing a role. It can enormously shrink the end-to-end -end process time. 
we were all looking at process times of a, for example, insurance claim, which would take about two weeks or more. Now it can be done in 15 minutes or less. So that is the order of magnitude of process uh, cycle time reduction and reliability increase with this. And of course, all of us are aware of the term that we use called Uberization or uh, things of that nature where the business model itself is entirely different. But when you think about all these things, why people are really looking for digital transformation is very evident in this. Like the same uh, Uber example, they grew uh, obnoxiously in terms of their revenue, in terms of their customer base. They were able to make disruptive innovations. I'm sure many of you know that they can even hire a helicopter or a boat, uh, just like you hire a cab in other countries. And even in our own area, like um, you know, Asia Pacific, Grab has really improved user experience much beyond any of these people. And everybody is happy, the team is happy, the partners are happy, the employees are happy. So why not really look at digital transformation? And that's a very clear recipe for business success. So businesses around the world have really used this. So, but what is at the heart of all these things is what we call as a business platform. And I'm sure all of you know about the technologies that are used today in building business platforms. First, of course, is cloud. The one of the characteristics of business platform, it's like it's all it's on 24 by 7. It will use multi-structural data. It is not necessarily just using uh, relational type of rows and column kind of data, but pictures, audio, video, IoT data, streaming data, everything is very much possible uh, to be used in these business platforms. We extensively use mobile devices, and that's a part of the business platform interaction. And there are a tremendous amount of analytics and business, uh, sorry, machine learning algorithms which are built into that, which will help in automating some of the decisions that we make. Similarly, it is what we call today as a planet scale. If everybody on the planet logs in, it can really survive. So that's the kind of thing that people expect that uh, out of the platform and in any company today around the world as you go you will see multiple generations of IP applications and infrastructure and a lot more things are happening there so if we really look at the complexity what exists in big uh, enterprises you will see a picture like this so here all the boxes represents different uh, applications and the maze that you see are the way that the data is interchanged across these applications this is not a joke for anyone and to maintain this and make sure that this is not only reliable but also secure in the context of the cyber security it can be a mind-boggling problem so uh, it is complex but at the same time today we are uh, getting methods like the one that we are going to talk about that um, that can help us to manage this Similarly, if you really look at this, the connected world is not without problems. So we just cannot be working with the problems all the time. As we talked in the beginning, reliability is an expectation and not a just another uh, non-functional requirement. Now the world has done something very interesting towards this. I'll quickly explain this. Earlier, we all knew that we had a product. The one you can see on this is like a tractor. Next, these, all these things are very interestingly depicted by Harvard Business uh, articles. So the source is HBR. Then the product became smarter. So it had more electronics. It had some amount of information. It could collect data. It could show you some statistics. It can tell you if something is faulty. So that's a smart product. Now, such smart products got connected, which is the third generation, so that if something goes wrong, it can automatically contact somebody else for repair. Now, in a product ecosystem or a product system, many such things will interact and uh, become a self-sufficient, self-contained uh, world of its own. Uh, there are very interesting things that are there in what is called as, uh, uh, you know, uh, here ecosystems. If you look for more things called ecosystems, you will find how ecosystems are built today. Now, ultimately, many such ecosystems like smart uh, factory a smart car a smart home and everything will start interacting and that's what we are going to finally see as system of systems so it's only going to become complex 
and we have to ensure reliability in such a complex world. But we have seen in our own development world that how we used to work. We develop a code and give it to the operations person across the wall. And in fact, I myself is a victim of one of those such situations where we consciously created a software test center five miles away from the place where the code was developed. And so that they only test and then only they will approve for operations. But today, that is not the mindset that we want. We want more collaboration culture where we work together. The operations people also know about coding. They also can understand how this software is created and developers also feel the how, what are the challenges that are involved in running this software on a commercial production site. So, and how often you can make changes. These things really need to be worked out together and then only we can really look at uh, a better uh, way forward for all of us. This is nothing different from when you compare it to our own human body. I'm sure all of us know that you know we have different systems, the respiratory system to the circulation system to the respiratory system. When I say that I'm healthy, I am very confident that all these systems are working in harmony. They are working like a teamwork. They are in sync all the time. Now, if one of the things go, others will fight it out and come, try to come back to normal. And that's exactly the way that you know that we are really looking at a high reliability organization or a high reliability enterprise. It is a culture. People will define that we don't want to struggle every day morning, go to the office. There are 100 tickets to be fixed. I fix that, go home. Next day, I come back and expect another 300 tickets to be there in my inbox. No, that's not going to help. We should figure out the, what is the root cause of the problem, collaboratively work and fix it as much as possible permanently, but anticipate problems. No road is accident free, however wonderful it is, however uh, less traffic there could be in the road. So unexpected events do happen and learning our orientation and a mindset to forget about just fixing the symptom and getting it on to the way where we really fix the problems is the way forward for high reliability organizations. Of course, tools are important, but the mindset, culture, and the ability to respond and accountability, holding on to the problem is the more important thing. I remember one very peculiar situation in the Hyatt group of hotels around the world. They have a very simple rule that whoever gets the problem will solve the problem. It does not mean, it does not matter whether you are a chef, you are in the security, you are in the front desk, you are in the bell desk, it doesn't matter. You go and ask for something and it works. I personally have seen this in at least three to four locations where they make sure that whoever gets the problem will own the problem and resolve the problem till the end. And uh, they, you know, that is the culture that we are really essentially looking for that we can draw from hospitality industry. So very quickly, a digital ecosystem is going to be the one. Customer experience is the competitive edge. Digital IT is complex, and we have to think of systems of instance. And welcome to the paradigm of SRE to enhance platform reliability. This is what we are going to be uh, getting there. And uh, now Anirudh will get a poll question for you. You have 10 seconds to answer. I'll be closing the poll now. Wonderful. Uh, most of you are there. All of these reduction in routine. Sorry, reduce error due to task automation. You will rely on automation extensively as you'll see in the thing uh, going forward. And collaboration culture is also going to get increased and all of them are true. And so uh, thanks for this. Now we will move on to the nuts and bolts of uh, SRE now. Anirudh. Yes, sir. Mm. 
Anirudh, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Is it in the presenter mode? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes please. All right. Am I audible? And I'll continue on the remaining uh, few minutes after. Uh, you know what uh, Prasad mentioned. R and B. I like call him uh, in in uh, Moi circle. Uh, Thanks for joining. Uh, everybody else who joined on the bridge, I uh, really appreciate uh, your interest and time you spent. I would like to share some perspective on the uh, site of liability engineering. Uh, the preamble, anyway, has been given by RNP. Uh, you know, uh, just the perspective of driving you know, customer satisfaction in a way, uh, uh, you know, through a very healthy approach. And we took the theme of uh, digital assets today. So let's let's focus on that. Uh, you know, this is. Uh, the new uh, happening thing uh, in our world is everything getting uh, digitalized. So what does it mean? Business is at the speed of thought today. Business is actually gone beyond anything which we are defined. As we heard, we are 24 bar 7 and we expect it to run 52 weeks. And we're getting very agile, you know, uh, very responsive to the market requirements. And people have so much of impatience that it's the shortest time to fix. You know, sun has never set on most of these necessities. Always on, on demand, no predictive uh, case sizing or capacity planning. We are just needed to deliver. And don't expect any outage. Now you can see the situation where we are all in. You know, with the changing scenario, uh, you could imagine what is actually happening around us in our own society. You know, the demand has gone up, which is actually for protective suits. All of a sudden, there is medicine and there is consumables and groceries. And imagine yourself being in a long line of essential purchases for your family and your quality of life. And you're there in a the shopping center. It could be even a small outlet close by. Or it could be a roadside hawker who doesn't have any money to transact. We have electronic medium to transact, UPI, Google Pay, credit card, debit cards. You expect that transaction to be complete because you want to get your stuff out. And imagine if the system doesn't actually help you. RMP did mention about the reliability of a rifle and its predictability of firing a bullet to protect his life. A common man in the trenches in the society today is facing the same thing in a line that you are trying to fulfill your transaction. And your credit card credential and your money is intact, but unless until it works at that outlet, independent of the network, independent of the POS uh, device, it needs to happen so that you can finish what you had intended to do. So the expectation has been scale, and it should be resilient, highly available, performing, and reliable as well. But this leads to a good point to ponder. Let's go behind the scene. What actually is helping us to do this? It makes way to our classic thinking of site reliability engineering. Let me get to a classic definition. SRE in its classic definition goes back as a discipline to incorporate the aspects of software engineering into the infrastructure and operations because they are now tied down together all in one. The main goal is to create scalable and highly available infrastructure. It need not be just software systems but more than that. We have devices, hardware, software, and anything in between as well. So it's a sub-discipline, and you know, it emphasizes on dependability of the lifecycle management, not just for the release out of the door, or just the product, or the system, or service. It is the complete life cycle. I need to handle even the warranty phase, where the reliability means that I can prevent failures and useful life. Long time ago, we always used to think that reliability engineering is for rocket science, Reliability engineering is for uh, aircrafts because they have shelf life for 50 years, traceability for more than 50 years. If there is a small piece of uh, hardware or a crash today, everybody looks all the way to the component what caused it to fail. You can recall that, and those realities of reliability and quality, which are closely related, are now becoming a norm of quality focus to prevent defects even in our utility services happens to be one of them is a digital asset. So it is throughout the useful lifetime of the product and the service where we are coming in, starting from the day it got launched as commissioning 
and also till the day it set for its sunset and it decommissioned. So summarize, SRE is a behavior and it is not a dedicated way or a role and it is a way of life which is coming in. What does this new paradigm actually reflect to us? Besides relevant engineering, uh, you know, as an engineer to an engineering practice, partners with product development and the teams involved with it, improve the product reliability while growing the infrastructure to scale and for its performance necessities. They also have a subconscious or a promiscuous role within the product eco life cycle, right? That is observability as well as the monitoring engineering because they try to look at the heartbeat or the health parameters, what is actually happening. That means providing metrics, traceability and alerting the other engineering teams within the development community and from the business standpoint toward the com company as to what is happening. You know what is this bringing as such? It has brought a new problem definition. For the depth of the person's knowledge is as good as a product developer. The vision of that person has to be as wide as a product architect and need to carry the experience of all the product engineers or a typical product engineer so that he has a testing experience what he would have done using his dog fooding and sampling out the reaction as a use case, as a user would face and troubleshoot like a master troubleshooter being a service engineer in the instance. Now there is a width problem as well as a depth problem and that is where we are actually running into it. Let me pause and then let you know what is our SRE and what is not in SRE. Key points to remember, SRE is with solid background of coding or automation so that a person understands the flesh and blood and the bone marrow contents of the product and not the skin and the after effects of the skin, right? It also applies these skills of knowing coding and automation to solve problems in the infrastructure and operation. Gives the insight of actually doing how the product behaves. The SRE is a practice of creating and maintaining the product, but also making sure that it exceeds its objective. Primary other things which key points to really note is to automate so that the burden of a toil of operations engineer is eliminated, proactively monitor and enable measurements so that we take corrective measures, provide incidental support and manage incidents as well, track outages and facilitate post-mortem to do root cause, create really service level indicators and objectives for the group and the product and the organization so that they can commit and improve on it. And if not the last, work within and with the development teams to improve upon their necessities for a better customer or product experience of the user. Mind you, I would like to call out SRE is not mundane operations. Mundane operations is sunset, it's gone. A dedicated SRE team is now responsible for an availability and the performance of the whole ecosystem and rest of the uh, other ITI necessities as well. You know, way back in, in the initial days of Facebook, it used to be like the product engineering fellows who coded would virtually live through the code to its full life cycle and handle all the incidents and everything else. Over a period of time from 2005 and onwards, the engineering community grew up and the life cycle became very siloed. Now, actually, we are back. The production engineering team simply is bringing back the concept of this integrated software engineering so that you collaborate, have two primary roles, but also have enough collaboration and auxiliary responsibilities as well. This is changing quite a bit of value systems. You know? The values which is now engineering, uh, you know, I will say site, reliability engineers paradigm is changing this way that the values have gone up to availability and reliability and that is seen through the end users experience as well. So they are getting to state that they are obsessed with availability and reliability. And we are an engineering team because everybody is proud to be an engineering team person and not to be treated as an enabling or a supporting or a servicing person after effect and afterthought. They promote all the necessary things which is from the automation mindset and also has the analytical ability to measure and see how they improve. And all of these people are with agile mindset so that this rapid work 
implementation and change management happens very quickly. The next major behavioral change has been the positive influence for business enablement and monetization. This positive influence is on the outcome of the product behavior. They do collaborate for RCAs, develop checklists, or perhaps address gaps, what is needed from the business standpoint, and encourage the development prioritization to partner with all aspects of other service teams as well. They understand the use cases and the capabilities. They discourage the, uh, you know, the dam versus the wall and we kind of thing. It has become one mindset of us and changing priorities. This has brought a new cultural difference because the siloed approach of the teams, even in agile world, it did influence, but now it is getting aggressively a common team to address the common cause of the product and the end users are the customers at large. The attitude of we and to re rework and to collaborate for root cause analysis and progressively improve things has been the way the value systems have changed. Let's just pause over and tell how did we mature or how did we get into this. We started all with this product engineering and service engineering or paradigm. And we kind of outgrew in a classic Venn diagram approach. You could see the complexity going up. On the other hand, we have also matured as from a, a little classical traditional uh, engineering community we have progressed as well. We become more human. And we started doing some planning, coding, what was waterfall and stiff process has now become a little more friendlier, very collaborative. Ajay came in, continuous integration kicked, and then you started seeing continuous delivery. Now you started seeing deployments, and now you heard enough on the DevOps, right? The, uh, the concept is this what we started with a subset of things has now become a superset of system of systems. And that is what has been uh, you know, brought as an ecosystem to support, not just a product. And you know, we just can't stop by functional needs of the systems, but we are looking at a platform and its life cycle completely. Let's share a pause and share a little bit of perspective. You know, when we look at it, any uh, thing objective, there are two ways of looking, outside in and inside out. I did mention about the inside out part of it that if we know what is happening in the bone marrow and what is happening in the blood and flesh and how things are going out before it becomes a dead skin and cover up the product, you have an inside out way of doing things. On the other hand, if you look at it from outside in, how is the user experience actually coming up? You know, we brought up an MVP and what does the people see? I've been making continuous integration pushing features, small features, people observe, there are aha moments, we do A-B testing, we do guinea picking, and we do dog fooding. All these things are functional, but there are certain non-functional attributes which needs to be continued to be focused. That is where is the inside out perspective as well. So that is where SRE comes in. Reliability, performance, efficiency improvements, getting the heartbeat and measuring and also metrics and catching up to things which we need to absorb is what is emerging as well. Changing gears at this juncture, what are the tenets and principles of the SRE? You know, primarily trying to look at things which are changing, tenets are the same, you know, know the service levels, what we can refer to, collaborate with business, embrace risk rather than being risk covers, eliminate unuseful work or toil, which is maintenance side of things as a human intervention part of work. And we need to know what is broken and why, so that we fix the why, so that it becomes a chance to re-fail is eliminated. With regards to principles, you know, one fundamental principle which is there is stuff does happen. Murphy's law, I think by now you are all recovered, uh, you know, recall from your mind, is every time Murphy lives, when something should not break, it will. And it will usually happen in a VIP interaction or a demo. When you have the most important time, you don't want to have, that's when Murphy really prevents. You know, for that, the other major things which actually is coming in is automate, robotize as many as possible, and SOPs with automation work, and making it simple, keeping it simple, and making it keep it simple, stupid, is what is there, so that we idiot proof, and we can't just stop at foolproof fixes. 
you know, then only we can you know, some of the SRE, uh, you know, golden signals, I would say, is to start beaconing out for latency, traffic, uh, you know, error counts, and uh, some of the logs actually reflection, and capacity utilization and saturation, and these are the parameters which the SREs look at it. Well, the rest of the other things would follow through, because with the cloud emergence, you have a lot of semi-automated systems which would continue to grow. If you are under an attack of denial of uh, service, uh, DD, uh, DDoS attack is there, but the infra can be tuned to keep pumping. Well, you block and you take corrective action, but the business will go on, but at an truncated capacity. So if you keep a dashboard looking at it from a SRE perspective, you take corrective action, but you're also watching what is happening, alerting, troubleshooting, fine tuning, as well as building capacity. Yeah, these are some of the signals and the golden signals, I would say, from the pulse of the infra. And that brings us to say what to watch, what to measure. And SRE gives you primarily focus on reliability measures and an automation index. The most relevant metrics is to evaluate the effectiveness of the emergency response we need to take if something is not up to the mark, or restore reliability and confidence back into the system. Resilience is built in. And this is how we quickly uh, get to see the yesteryears of MTTR. Some of the leading and lagging measures are that way. The leading measures could be, you know, how much am I utilizing capacity planning? When will I run out of these reserves? Capacity is what I have. Then I start fixing those things. Or the lagging one is to say that, look, these are the utilization trend. Weekend is coming up, and there's going to be a lockdown. There's a lot more other demand coming up. Some of these indexes will reflect. The thing we're trying to look at these is uh, the automation part of it, because most of it drives corrective actions are that way. And consistently with the systems to scale, the automation also will look at it. Because some of them, as Dr. Bhatt was mentioning, we need to do automated provisioning. If at all you're looking at automation, you are sleeping, and somebody else may be awake, but they will not know how to do it. But if the system goes at the threshold violation of a particular event, it starts cloning and creating capacity. And highly repeatable and you know, less or none human intervention will always be helpful so that it takes over, gives you necessary relief. We can repair time because you know how to do and how to fix things. And these are only feasible when the uh, you know, activities are put into what is known as test automation, right? So I leave this thoughts with most of you. The next major thing which I wanted to bring up to your attention was this, what is the measures? We have been very traditionally measuring a lot of things. There are new dimensions which are coming up. In the last four years, Google has been trying to socialize the concept and they introduce additional things other than the traditional SLA kind of thing. You know, there's some things which came in as service level indicators and then the service level objectives. By now, you would have already visualized the definition of these two. These are from the context of the business perspective, not from a mathematical mediocre number to catch because we are behind the scene, but nevertheless, look at it from a business currency level. If there are certain things as such, you know, when you look at it, if at all you're looking at number of connections, can we look at it, can I collate it to say that number of customers in Uber, number of requests made for a trip booking would be a request for an API and its sizing, and then what level at what seconds, as Sam was mentioning, at what percentage of people get it in less than two, two and a half seconds as a response. You will not be interested to wait for a booking if it is more than 30 seconds. You would switch to Ola or to any other alternative. So in that connection, these indicators have to be looked at it from a business currency rather than a number would say, I have 18 microseconds as a countdown time. Now, service level objectives also get to change the metric definition depending on suited onto the business side of it, right? Let's look at uh, the general team uh, responsibility. You can visualize, read through it very quickly. But none of these have been new, anything different. But primarily, I would like to look at it, people who have been very conversant with ITIL and ISO 27K, they would relate every one of them covered in their earlier past process and procedures. Right now, the emphasis is only to make sure that role of champion reliability and stability has become SRE's major drive. The resilience is becoming accountable and the measure of the toil. That means how much the system could auto-fix itself rather than I fixing it. 
you know, that is the difference which is actually brought up because of site reliability engineering practices. Reducing technical complexity, yes, we did also, we, we did a lot more things, capacity planning, decision to be taken, use lambda kind of an intelligence or AI, and on conditions, I will kick in more infra capacity or it based on my budget, based on my business which is coming in, I could scale up my infra on AWS and give up to my customer needs. And in terms of the swings, what we are seeing, one day it may be a few hundreds, or it may be a planet size, something happened and then the whole planet wants to get to take us. But I think we are all looking at the hand sanitizer demand which went out of the room. And the same thing has been for this facial uh, protection mask which went out of the blue. Nobody was interested even for 3 rupees for a mask. And today people are trading 350 rupees still buying that. Right? So these are some of the things which will give you where it translates to a commodity and into the supply chain as an IT infrastructure. Uh, ecosystem. Just passing across, you know, as uh, Dr. Butt was mentioning, in some of the activities, you know, for the team of SRE cattle, look at these things, which would look at planning, per, predominantly is planning and collaboration, and trying to create certain things so that the end users and the developers could learn out of it. Some of the other things which are people who are doing, uh, you know, work in the SRE would not deny Automation and management of configuration across infrastructure, alerting and analysis for continuous improvement. These are some of the significant team activities that SRE would do as such. I call it as team activities because it is very collaborative. There are many more roles to join. Just to summarize, in the present paradigm, you know, we have heard SRE, we have anyway learned enough of DevOps. I just picked up a few caricatures to bring to a perspective how they would be. In the DevOps uh, world, a DevOps engineer is very reactive because the continuous build, somebody checked it, it kicked in an integration, that delivered a package, and somebody says, use it, push it, try it, test it. Now it is very reactive. You see, imagine the person actually grabbing a bag and the DevOps engineer need to collect packages, put it in, and post it. Now they feel very motivated, they are controlling the whole environment. Let's pause. The paradigm is moving from right to left. There's a huge amount of to bring to you a little bit of a difference of what is currently seen in social equity position to move up to a better position and draw parallels with our uh, DevOps as well as uh, SRE as it is emerging. Now, people feel very responsible being an aircraft captain. It could be a cargo vehicle fellow or it could be a passenger uh, aircraft captain. He has a lot of things before him or after him, nothing moves. And even in the military, he's the first guy to get down from the aircraft, he'll be the last guy to board in, and with full respect, then only the engine gets primed. That's a typical DevOps person, we always pay. But imagine, without the concurrence and support of air traffic controller, do you think this guy is going to give you a turbulent-free, bump-free, good, metric aircraft parameters and a good flight. You know, that's the paradigm change. No doubt the aircraft captain is there, but much more is significantly playing a role promiscuously is the air traffic controller guiding him from the airplane control all the way to the main runway to a long runway to hand off between air traffic controls and cruise through to reach their destination across the oceans or across continents. The same thing happens to use the principle even in stewards and waiters versus the gourmet chef. See the whole thing, waiting on people to take orders versus the chef to provide a gourmet food which you would look at, look forward to. Lastly is a reactive nature of the Excuse surgeon me. and... Sir, yeah? so your screen is not visible. Yeah, suddenly the screen went off. Yes, sir. Is it? Yes, sir. So can you just try sharing it again? Let me get to that again. Thanks for, uh, to, you know, sure, uh, I think there was a glitch in the network. My apologies, gentlemen. Yes, sir, your screen is visible again. Back. Uh, yes, sir. So we had seen the screen as well as the next one you were switching to. Give me a second. I just need to flip between the two. Uh, 
Am I back on green? Yes, sir. Anirudh, okay. No, so last sentence, if not the least, uh, you know, I'm trying to get a paradigm change between getting to a doctor, to a surgeon or a physician to be a nutritionist so that we get proactive and put in nutrients so that we don't fall sick rather than meeting a physician or a surgeon for rectification who would as well supplement our food and intake and be healthier. So the whole way is trying to look at this instead of being expert in differential mathematics, we all study mathematics. And we try to look at it instead of dealing with a variable like the differential mathematics, let's start building value with the integral mathematics way. So the DevOps approach of things is to make sure the supply is removed and the delta x tends to zero in the mathematical calculation, right? dy, dy, dx is equal to zero, tending towards zero. But in SRE, it's tending the other way around. The integral value of this proposition to make it infinite. So once you do an integer of a variable x, and you treat it to infinity, you have a different paradigm. And that is where SRE is driving to us in a correlation or in a stability. So primarily the software paradigm shifts I have done from that perspective of engineering, whereas, uh, you know, the paradigm sh uh, sh shift, which has been articulated by Mac McKinsey, uh, is they what we started with BPM and the enterprise architecture. And we are trying to look at it from the efficiency of uh, growing for the capacity. And we landed up with compliances because we have to be standardized and be across the culture secure or be acceptable. And the development practices being because the, uh, you know, the window of engineering is crashing and methods of engagement is different. And now the new generation of infra is expected because we've changed from on-prem whether it is old or new or old existing 50 years old application stack, we change the data centers are all vanishing. They're all becoming universal data centers. We don't know where the are going out. And you know, we have become uh, completely a different way to manage all these things. So welcome to SRE. And in a way, actually, it's a way of life to deliver robust utility services because every one of our work is now going to be utility service. Mind you, anything you touch and feel with IT is becoming utility. And people are remotely consuming it. They don't even touch it and feel it. Today, uh, you are working from home, and you are actually contributing 24 bar 7. And that is experience. Nobody knows where you are and which part of the world, which data center you are touching the code, or actually operating, or measuring. So the mindset is actually changing. Here is a set of you know, I would call it a SRE uh, sets. Let's start with the mindset change, and then perhaps the skill set advancement change. Thirdly is the tool set adoption change, and then finally the data set, which we need to do. And you've been seeing a lot of these things. I'll pick a few examples of it. The mindset change is to look at it from user experience, look at it from a business transformation, so that that is the dollars which people are dependent on. The business is dependent on. If the dollars stop, it doesn't matter whether the city is in lockdown or fully working or you have a mela or you have a festival. As long as the business is with the user experience, people are able to order or consume what you're giving and rewarding you with this, that is a mindset. And that should happen with automation. Even if I'm not allowed to travel from my location, if my basic necessities and utilities is protecting me to do my juncture or job, automation helps me, that's a mindset. Skill set anyway, need to look at from the coding point and the analysis of the data. I have a vision of end to end. Look at it from the tool set standpoint. We have a new way of doing things to build and to release and perhaps to consume. And that also goes through with monitoring as well as alert, alerting systems so that we see uh, what is deviating and then we check proactive action. Lastly is about not only the regular functional analysis, we are looking at root cause and reliability analysis, how we can do. It's no more the proprietary interest of an automobile industry or an aircraft industry or rocket science. It is coming to a door very close by because we wrote the code, it is reaching our homes. So that's where the data set inference also has changed significantly with SRE. Perhaps at the end of this, conversation and with my perspective, I would say there are three actions which we should each of us try to look at. The SRE paradigm coming in, form a dedicated team around with us who are like-minded, address the relevant concerns and 
you know, the causes which would deviate them, map them to the SRE activities and take up a few of those as a proactive measures within our own workspace. Develop as uh, RMP always gives me an input, which is like an SRE book of knowledge, which may be more pertinent to your institution and your product and your business line. And run some lighthouse projects. That means experiment. It is good to fail, but we have some lighthouse projects so that it gives way to other projects and people will be able to pick up their journey path within the institution or within the enterprise. Lastly, develop a new uh, SRE adoption roadmap and then scale with baby steps. That way, things would be helpful. Start small experiments, control experiment, revolutionize it because culturally this will not be straightforward and it is going to be a difference. People who have been used to drinking river water would sense moment you serve them hard water, they say, oh, is this well water? Good well water? Because they are sensitive, right? Because the tastes have been acclimatized. So is SRE. Once you get SRE started, and continue right from your home location. You don't need to wait saying that, look, I'm going to wait for the next two quarters after the general body meeting of my company will start. No, you have a great opportunity now. When you work from home, you could actually start these experiments. Let me pause and then just summarize whatever I said, starting with what RNP did mention that our own integrated digital ecosystem is the way in the future and will continue to drive that way. Customer experience has been a competitive necessity for survival. If we don't, we are lost and we'll be killed. Integrated digital IT is very complex, it's getting worse. Think of system of system and ecosystems. Welcome to the new paradigm. Get proactive, get SRE, eliminate toil when there is an opportunity and time given to you. Code, optimize, do anything where you can without diversion because you're working alone fully in this paradigm and the environment is just suitable to experiment with the study. Thus, let me shut up and then try to share these, some of the references. All these references have been very good to spend time and while you get time, you could actually download and have all of these free resources. Luckily, Google has been experimenting and has published books, has given workbook as well. You could download and use them as appropriate. I would highly recommend you guys to spend some time. Interesting videos, interesting articles as well. Good reference material as I said, and it is free. Please do uh, go through them. Thank you, and uh, back to you, Anirudh. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, sir, the questions are in the chat. I would request oh, okay. you, and, you and RMP, sir, to kindly address them. Give me a minute, so then I can actually stop uh, broadcasting my yes, sir. slides. Do you mind moderating it? You yes, want to start because I know. Just oh, please pick one. Uh, so, sir, basically, uh, Sir Merrill Vincent is asking, what is the cost of implementing SRE in an organization? What is the ROI and how can we measure it? Are All we right. going let in me, order? Yes, sir. Let, let, let me spend a few sir, a few thoughts on it. The name again, you said? Who was it? Merrill. Just, Merrill. Yes, sir. Uh, Merrill, I know the way you look at it, uh, you know, the cost of... Uh, is how you perceive it. Today you have an, an quantum of uh, uh, toy, and you, you can measure it by the number of tickets, the time spent on ticket, and number of people putting their hours, and you have a dollar value or a rupee away for it. Now if you automate it, and if you see that goes away, and it gives you self-remedial approach, you have an SRE dashboard to measure, and how did the system auto-create itself, and you see an ROI that way, right? If at all you have a quantum of uh, uh, you know, tickets to handle or as such. The other side is also if there is less reliable or current baseline reliability and if you put an SRE and you try to increase the uh, availability index or performance index or uh, scalable index or capacity recovered or created automatically and that's another measure. So you have that also as a return of investment. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, mean, I just want to yes. add to that. Um, yes. This is one <laughs> important <laughs> thing that, uh, that also happens because of uh, SRE, which is the reliability and the consequent rework that you would be doing if this was not in place. As uh, uh, Rabindranath brought out, if you take a reactive approach where we, when we see the problem, we will fix it. So then uh, obviously there is a whole lot of rework and all the associated uh, working backwards to fix the problem in many subsystems that may be contributing to it. And you would be you know, in, a react, in a proactive approach, you would be uh, really fixing those uh, holes to a significant extent, uh, extent on a permanent basis. So that way you would save a lot of rework uh, on the releases that go into the production. That's one of the major part of our way. Sure, sir. So moving to the next question, Rinsi Ranjan have asked, how is SRE different as a concept from DevOps or uh, CICD, or is it an element of DevOps? He so I think that will be a contrast of this slide. All right. So if somebody caught up in the role of an aircraft captain or a pilot to an air traffic controller, I think they should think what is the difference between DevOps and SRE. That caricature kind of thing gave a glimpse of it. And you know, SRE is a superset. DevOps happened to be a subset in my opinion. People may say, no, you don't understand this, but uh, there are certain things. DevOps takes care of uh, functional and specific transactional interests. Whereas SRE takes care of functional, transactional, and non-functional attributes at an organization level and the business paradigm necessities as well. So that's a superset. DevOps will be a subset in my opinion, to be fair. Okay, sir. And uh, Ram Prasad uh, had asked, are there stages, stages, yeah, stages of maturity? As such. There are a couple of uh, floated models. There's nothing like a CMMI uh, blessed certification kind of thing which is coming. Uh, it's more or less, you know, you like uh, the agile world is uh, asking its own maturity. You have a SRE community who don't like any kind of maturity terms and the numbers to qualify. So it is just a way of life, and you find them uh, uh, growing up. Uh, there are one or two models being put in by uh, the uh, consulting organization. Interesting to look up. There are articles. Take a look at it. I don't think I would like to advocate anything specific. Prasad sir, anything to comment, please? Over to you. Well, I think, uh, thanks for being with us, and uh, hope you really got the, um, uh, you know, some uh, interest. Uh, that's all that we could contribute to today. Reliability in any digital asset becomes a very critical element, and today we are in the uh, early stages of adoption of this. And it is not that there are no problems and uh, many organizations are there to support and help people who have uh, you know, who take up these initiatives and uh, uh, you know from both our sides uh, have a wonderful time and uh, thanks for joining us today and thanks uh, uh, dr yogesh for giving us this opportunity to share our thoughts thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, i would also want to bring your attention to our upcoming webinars Promising Kama waters and common mistakes made with raw data lakes and delta lake to the rescue is the upcoming webinar which will be next week on the same time and uh, then post that we would have a 9 to 5 on industry revolution 4 on the 9 technologies which are transforming IR4 and the 5 actions to embrace them. So these would be the upcoming uh, webinars they would be talking about uh, cutting edge uh, areas and these technologies and how they are impacting them. We look forward to your participation in both of these. And finally, your feedback. I have, uh, uh, please check your chat window. Uh, the feedback link and the registration link for these webinars is already being pasted. You can just click on these links, register yourself, and then attend these webinars as well. Any other questions? If uh, anyone has, I can unmute them. You can just raise your hands. Chaitra, uh, I'm just unmuting you. Yes, Chaitra, you've been unmuted from my side. You can just unmute yourself and ask the question. Kostub, I'll be unmuting you after this. 
Okay, so I think Chaitra didn't have a question. Anybody else would want to clarify or would have any other further queries? Okay. Let's close. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. everyone, for your time. And look forward to seeing you in the next webinars as well. Thank you, RNP, sir. Thank you, Ravindranath, sir, for your time. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you.